threat of disaster is never pleasant. Welcome to the Casual Preppers Podcast. These safety measures are essential. The only place for prepping, survival, and entertainment. This will be your source of survival instructions and information. Every member of the family must be coached in the business of survival. Here are your hosts, Cam and Kobe. Everybody's going crazy. We're going to make you go crazy. <laughs> Everybody's going crazy. Yeah. I'm excited about today's episode. <laughs> Yeah, this is a super interesting subject because right. I didn't know that many uh, events had caused this. Yeah, many. Mass hysteria. Yeah, mass we're hysteria. Gonna, we're going to talk about that. We're excited. Do you remember Hysteria by um, Def, Def Leppard? Leppard? Yeah, of course. Hysteria. Yeah, yeah. that's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're going to talk about that and all the weird events around it mm-hmm. and how today... Yeah, mass hysteria. I think is still being created it's, <laughs> by our media. It's a constant mass so, hysteria. <laughs> but before, I want to tell you about a little book I have next to my Bible in my bedroom in the top Quadruple drawer. Combination. <laughs> yeah, it's it's <laughs> the yeah. Um, what, what would <laughs> pin top? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I can't do that. It's no. geometry. Yeah, but um, the Prepper's Medical Handbook. Mm. It's a good book. It's so good. It's Basically, all the medical knowledge you need in an easy-to-read book, mm-hmm. and it's by a doctor. Yeah. Not some Joe Blow. No. Not a PA. No. Or anything like <laughs> not that. one of those idiots. It's a real deal. <laughs> yeah. But um, I really like this book because it kind of breaks down all of the different um, simple things you'll probably encounter when you're off the grid, like yeah. practicing off-the-grid medicine. Mm-hmm. And you can even use its guide to build your own fac and mm-hmm. things like that. It's a super easy to read book, like I said, and it doesn't get into a lot of deep medical jargon. You're not going to do brain surgery with this book. There's not a chapter on brain surgery. Nope. In but the like, woods. But like <laughs> head trauma and things yeah. like that, like stuff you're going to encounter. Mass hysteria? That's probably in there somewhere. I, I haven't would, looked. Yeah, probably. But um, go get this book at preppersmedicalhandbook.com or amazon.com and you won't regret it. You probably won't. save your life. Get it. Probably save your life. Get it, kids. All right, man. Uh, Mind Spanner 119, Mass Hysteria. Uh, women in here? What do you, what big do you, old hair with like a big lint ball at the end of it? it. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry <clears throat> about that. No, we don't We don't let women in the studio, <laughs> so it must be from you. No, 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 no. <laughs> you don't go there. No, no. Too technical in there. <laughs> we got a makeup Computers, room around the microphones, corner. microphones. I know that's confusing. <laughs> Just kidding. Many women come in here. It's jokes, people. <laughs> Don't go off on mass hysteria on yeah. us, all right? Yeah, so let's talk about what is mass hysteria? What are we even talking about yeah, today? Yeah, so um, it's super interesting because it does it, – um, it can be broken down to a lot of different things. Like mm. researchers have actually advised referring to it as like collective obsessional behavior. Yeah. Like people just get like real worked up. Like a Taylor Swift altogether. concert. Exactly. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Have you seen right. some of the videos of Seriously, those people? they're freaking nuts. They're insane. Like balling and yeah, it's just weird. And they and they spent like a hundred or I mean like a thousand dollars on some of those seats. And I'm like, yeah. what is wrong with you people? I know, I don't get that it's either. It's pop songs. I was looking at George Strait. Yeah. Um, because I'm like, I'd like you to really pictures of him. <laughs> I just look at him once in a while. Yeah. Gosh dang, this makes your testosterone jump. It really a does, yeah. But no, he's he's like coming to Denver, and I'm like, I'd uh-huh. like to see one before he retires. Yeah, and it's like three fifty a ticket. Good lord, which, and that's George Strait. That's George Strait. Like yeah. I'd pay it, but mm-hmm. yeah, people are paying a thousand dollars for like I don't know if I'd pay bebop stuff. <laughs> look, Taylor Swift can write a song. I'll give it to she's her. She's good. She can. Yeah, she's pretty know. good. But, anyway, I don't know where I got going with that, but um, it was my the fault. other thing is uh, can be called like psychogenic illness. Oh yeah. So Hate they that. get all these physical symptoms, mm-hmm. and um, but it's all from the, their psych. You know, um, psych problems. I see that a lot in clinic. Anyways, is people <laughs> like I got all this problem, I'm, my stomach aches and stuff like that, and they're you know really they're super depressed. They're psychosomatic disorder. Where I get just, that anytime my kids get sick, I'm like I'm getting me too. Sick. I'm Swallow getting a million sick. times. <laughs> my throat. What's wrong? It hurts. I'm nauseous. What's happening? Oh, yep. So but then I don't get sick. I believe you know it's it's obviously a real deal. Like For sure. Yeah. People have. I mean, the your your mind has such oh yeah. power over your body. Um, and another big one, probably one of the more common ones, is conversion disorder. It's yeah, we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Um, psychological symptoms affect the nervous system in absence of physical cause of illness, mm. and which may appear in reaction to psychological distress. Yep. 
a lot of these that we're going to talk about came from people just being stressed out, whether it be from World War II or um, just other like stress induced weirdness. And then it like it's like contagious to other people. Yeah, it's, it's so, so weird. It's so odd, yeah. right? I see that in this town. Do you? Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> got the same. But like <laughs> I, I I mean we totally saw this with COVID. Right. Of, like people just kind of like losing their minds and believing things mm-hmm. and it just it just went on. Mass over the place. hysteria. Yeah. So um but yeah, uh, it's got a lot of different um names and but huge mm-hmm. I mean, hugely a psychological problem. For so. sure. And, and some of these are hilarious, yeah, too. Yeah. So that's that's so. kind of why we chose this, because some of these are weird and hilarious, <laughs> yeah. right? Speaking of psychological problems, yeah. furries, kind well, of a big deal nowadays. Yeah, it's a thing. You know, meowing, hissing at your friends. Yeah. Maybe getting to school to build you a litter box to pee in. Right. Well, there's that, Swifties and there's furries. Man, lots yeah. of crazies. So crazy people, but... Yeah. Guess what? Furries, they existed way back when. Yeah, this isn't a new thing. No. Right? So, one day, mm-hmm. a nun living in a convent in France, oh. um, sometime during the middle medieval period, they figure, uh, began to meow like a cat. She just uh, decided to yeah, it's time. start meowing like a cat. I am sick of this place. I will start to <laughs> Is meow. Is it meow meow? <laughs> oui, oui, meow meow. <laughs> so, <laughs> she just decided she's just going to yeah. start meowing. She right. figured, time to be a furry. <laughs> Um, after a brief time, you're gonna find out that a lot of these things happen with nuns. Yeah, and uh, so, like I don't know, I don't know what it, goes on in the nunnery. Yeah, but something weird. it breaks them. Yeah, it's not good for their psyche for sure. No. Um, after a brief time, other nuns were like, you know what? <laughs> Let's get in on this meowing. <laughs> There's something to this meowing thing. So they just yeah. started meowing together, yeah. and it wasn't like just randomly like meow, like going to the kitchen or something. <laughs> meow, meow. <laughs> They actually had a structured event where they gathered at a certain time of day and oh. just started like meowing together. Really? Yeah. So the more I read into it, it was like, it was like, that's was almost you, weird. Tonight at eight, we're going to all come and meow. Yeah. We're going out on a meow lawn. We're going to get done. <laughs> yeah, so the nuns um, started to just gather and they'd meow mm. for a few hours every night. <laughs> and it became, so it became so loud that the residents around it were just like, what, what is going on? The, Why are there like, the dogs are in the, the neighborhood nuns were going adopting nuts. a bunch of cats? Um, but it was just them meowing. I don't yeah. know if they were meowing to like, um, church hymns or what, but right. um, it was happening. And anyways, it became such a disturbance that they ended up bringing in soldiers and <laughs> this is what's even... <laughs> The, to come in and disrupt this orchestra. Okay. And the way they did it is mm-hmm. they were threatening they're just going to whip them. Oh, yeah. You that can keep me meowing, meowing. We're going to beat you. <laughs> yeah. So that's how, they, a cat. that's how they do things. Was this, where was it at? Was it in France? Fr- in France. Yeah. Most of these came from France. Yeah, the French have some issues. <laughs> they do. Like too, mu- too many croissants or something. <laughs> I don't know what's I don't happening. I know. It's kind of crazy. It's yeah. Like, um, but anyways, yeah. So they brought in these soldiers to guard uh, yeah. around the nunnery and, and basically threaten them. They're like, you can keep that meowing up. You can get whipped. You keep, keep meowing. See what happens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do I hear meow? Do I hear meow? <laughs> is that a cat or is that a nun? <laughs> because if it's a cat, that's There's a fine. cat walking around. They just like go in and whip a couple <laughs> yeah. nuns. I heard a cat. Yeah. So anyways, that's they it. don't know why she began meowing. Mm-hmm. This sounds like a kid's book. I know, huh? <laughs> yeah. The nun went meow. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Two nuns went meow. Three nuns went meow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they should make a kid's book they on should, this. Huh? Kids are like, what's happening? <laughs> Um, but anyways, it, it, they don't know why. And they figure just like kind of that mass hysteria where it's like, yeah. something's with this. We're just going to keep, it must've been like the head nun or something. Oh yeah. Cause all of them just started falling along and yeah. they don't know why. Your boss so, starts meowing. <laughs> You're going to, you want that raise yeah. at the end of the year. Yeah. You'll meow if you need That's to. That's true. Let's get this meeting started. <laughs> meow, 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 <laughs> meow, meow. All right. We got 15 minutes of meows and then we're going to talk about the numbers. Okay. <laughs> just let it all out. Just let it out. <laughs> Then we'll get to these reports, okay? So anyways, yeah. um, that is the case of the meowing nuns. Great. There's also some nuns that did some other things, okay? <laughs> it's so weird. It was like several nuns. And I don't, these are only two, and there were several others I yeah, saw. Yeah, there was. This, Screaming this, nuns and stuff like yep, that. Yep, this is another nun story. Uh, so a doctor in the 15th century, he wrote this. A nun in a German... Oh, so this is German, oh, not okay. French, okay? Stepped it up to... A nun in a German nunnery fell to biting all her companions. In the course of a short time, 
all the nuns of the convent began biting each other. <laughs> <laughs> the news of this infatuation among the nuns soon spread and... Ow, I feel so good. <laughs> I'm just going to chew on you. Um, and I'm praying. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Quit nibbling. I'm trying to pray to the Lord. <laughs> All right? Um, <laughs> and it now passed convent to convent throughout the greater part of Germany. Oh, wow. It wasn't just one. No. Huh? Principally Saxony. And it afterwards visited the nunneries of Holland. And at last, the nuns had a biting mania even as far as Rome. <laughs> So, like, this, like, spread all over Europe. I heard they're biting over there. Yeah, those crazies. You want to try it? <laughs> Maybe there's something spiritual about it. Yeah. Let's pray and bite. Okay? <laughs> so, before long, the mass hysteria went international. The convents at the Netherlands, as far north as Holland, reported outbreaks of biting nuns. The hysteria also <laughs> oh traveled across the Alps into Italy. Like, it was just freaking... That's... There wow. was saliva and bite marks everywhere. <laughs> All right. So the authorities, obviously, they're confused. They don't know what's going on. And they're alarmed because they don't want, like, a bunch of nuns just biting each other. This no. is bad. It's bad for business and bad for the Catholics. It's, it's just not good. It doesn't look good. All right. So they attempted various countermeasures, right? Um, the nuns at length worried one another from Rome to Amsterdam. They were they were just all worried. When prayers and masses failed, so they're just like, let's pray about it. <laughs> let's have some mass. <laughs> See what goes on. Um, it wasn't working. Okay. They were still biting each other. Um, the church resorted to exorcisms and casting out of devils and demons. Biting devils. Right. So like, okay, mass didn't work. Prayer didn't work. Yeah. Get the exorcist over here. Pretty standard. These freaking nuns. Pretty standard. Will not stop biting. It's got to be the freaking devil. Um, that did not work either. But... Look, they figured it out in, at the end, all right? They resorted to a more basic approach and threatened to flog or dunk into the water any <laughs> nun who bit somebody. Okay? Just punishment. Just like straight up like you're going to go in the river or I'm going to flog you. Uh, I love flog. I know. That's a great word. It's a great word. And that worked. And after a few examples were made, the nuns quickly came to their senses and the biting fever rapidly subsided. You did urge under control. <laughs> yeah. Mm. want to bite, but I also don't want to get my hair wet. <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure what to do here. <laughs> this is the worst thing Thanks for Thanks for joining me, sisters. <laughs> yeah. I, too, had a biting problem. Yeah. My name's Miss... Never mind. Gonna... <laughs> That's the worst thing a woman can do to get their hair wet. Oh, yeah. Right? Yep. So that, they the figured it out. But they all got those things over there. Yeah, they their don't show their hair anyway. Yeah. No. I don't know. <laughs> that one's interesting. Yeah, the biting nuns. Back to France. Oh, yeah. This is great, great for mass hysteria. Yeah. The yeah. French are always up yep. for something. They're, they're kicking it up mm -hmm. here. This one's super weird. And this one's one of the most well-known yeah. uh, events of like mass hysteria. Yeah, um, this is a popular one. July 1518. Okay. It's a nice little hot day in France. Oh, yeah, and one nice. seemed particular. It must have been a particularly nice day because old Frau Trofeo. Mm -hmm. Trofea? Uh, Trofea. Trofea. Um, I don't know. Trofea. She started silently dancing in the streets of Strasbourg. Okay. Getting her twerk on. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm just, sure. Just, you know, I just, like, the thing that's weird is just dancing without, like, there's no headphones. Yeah. And there's no music. She's just getting it on. She's getting it, just you know. Just to, like, the, the beat of the clopping yeah. horses in the cobblestone <laughs> road. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. She kept up her bizarre dance marathon for nearly a week. What? Then suddenly citizens just began to join in. Yeah. Just, well, what's she doing? <laughs> she got something going on. All right, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm off this week. <laughs> so people just. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. I got a little vacation time I coming. I got the plowing done. Yeah. It's time to get down. Yeah, the scythe <laughs> is all sharp, ready to go for next <laughs> yeah. season. We're done. So soon the streets were filled with three dozen dancers. Whoa. And by August. So July, mm -hmm. August, and outstanding 400 were getting down, cutting what? a little rug day and night, nonstop, just mm -hmm. dancing, just dance fever. Wow. Stunned and puzzled, doctors nevertheless proclaimed this affliction was caused by a fever. Oh, dance fever. And so they recommended- oh, Saturday night fever. Yeah. Do you know what their, um, do you know what their uh, prescription was to oh, treat this fever? I don't. Let them dance themselves free of it. That makes sense. That was their prescription. That's what I would do. I don't know what it is. But let them dance the fever away. Let them get about it. So they just, right. they just got it going. Um, 
The city tried to help constructing dance stages and bringing in a <laughs> band of professional dancers. How is that going to help? The thing is weird. It's like I picture all these people just you can yeah. hear their shoes and gravel kicking around. It's like those videos where they yeah. take out the music. <laughs> it's exactly what I pictured. They're hilarious. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like the music videos from like the '80s, but they take the music out. And so and and all you just, can hear is their sneakers like yeah. squeaking and like <laughs> That's hear them like. Mm, 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 yeah, mm. exactly. And yeah. so, mm. uh, four hundred people are Gosh. just dancing day and night mm. for weeks. This ain't um, good for the economy. No. They ain't buying France wasn't, um, croissants. milk wasn't being produced. No. And it wasn't, yeah. Mm -mm. Cows weren't getting milked. Stuff was happening. Yeah. Um, but I don't see how, like, constructing a dance I don't either. They were trying, I think they were trying to get him off the streets and, like, into a <laughs> more controlled area. But let's, let's just, they're like, I don't know, get him something nice. Did, what, you try breadcrumbs, you know? Yeah. And lead him off. <laughs> Reese's know. pieces. Get him where you want him to go. <laughs> Yeah, just like symbol, just trying to bring it. We're doing a conga line now. Follow me, <laughs> <laughs> right into <Yeah>. the prison. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yeah, exactly. That's, That's what where I that see. came from. Yeah. So, and there are claims that guild halls were refurbished to accommodate the dancing. They're just oh, building man. up on this. Like a whole country's going to be dancing soon. Yeah. As well as mus musicians and strong people to help keep those dealings with the dancing. Strong to stay people upright. is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Oh. What do they do? <laughs> They're just. Lift weights? I get lift people. They, they're doing yeah. candlestick and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, for sure. The swing. Yeah. Um, this backfired, and the council was forced to ban public dancing as oh. people danced in fear. It was a punishment from St. Vitus. St. Vitus? And to be free of sin, many joined in on the dancing epidemic. Yeah. It's weird. The council uh, went as far as to ban music as well. That's Stop it all. Work. That's not going to work. They Done. were dancing without music in the yeah. beginning. So, events similar to this have happened in medieval ages, the 11th century in Saxony, there, mm. uh, where it was believed to be the result of a demonic possession or mm -hmm. divine judgment. 15th century Apulia, Italy, a woman was bitten by a tarantula oh, what? and the venom, uh, making her dance convulsively. Oh my God! The only way to compare the uh, the only way to cure the bite was to shimmy. <laughs> so she's just dancing that freaking venom away. So, um, oh my gosh. People began collapsing from exhaustion during this event. For sure, yeah. Some even died. The hysteria, which is well documented in historical records, didn't end until the dancers were finally removed from the streets. Yeah, they made. Do you know they made a movie about this? No. Yeah, I, it's oh, really? called uh, Footloose. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that makes, sure, that, was it, right? that makes the most sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kevin religious, because yeah, it was. It was all religious. Like yeah. there's religious parts in that too. Mm -hmm. huh? Religious means were uh, were the attempted fix. Um, they believed this was brought on more by stress. Sure. Disease and famine were sweeping through uh, Strasbourg at the time. Many people were reduced to begging. So it was just like, forget about it. So they're Let's like busking dance. on the streets. They're buskers. Yeah. They're begging. Yeah, exactly. Dancing. They put their cup out. Yeah. Dro <laughs> drop your quarter in there yeah, for exactly. my dance. So it was modern day Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. It's sure. Pretty much. Uh -huh. But um, those who danced were ordered to go to the shrine of St. Vitus, wear red shoes, and were sprinkled with holy water that had and painted crosses on the tops of the soles. Okay. Really weird. Did that work? This is something to help. They mm. also had to hold small crosses in their hands, mm -hmm. and incense and Latin uh, inc incantations were part of this ritual. Wow. Man, this is probably where raves came from. It sounds so, kind of like they had like, glow sticks in their hands. Yeah. They had fancy <laughs> shoes. <laughs> this is where raves came you know, from. Yeah, yeah. This is the start. But, of anyways, rave. apparently it kind of worked. Um, mm. Words spread that this was kind of successful and the dancing finally stopped. Oh, man. They don't know. It's super weird, though. Yeah. There's tons of people dancing nonstop till some were dropping dead. But I guess it's better it's like, than like famine and all that. So that happened like in Hocus Pocus. Dance until I'm dead. That's true. <laughs> That's dance true. until you die. That is true. Yeah, it's the same thing. So a witch. It was probably, probably the behind witches. the whole thing. Gosh dang witches. Yeah, that's France. Now, okay. Good times back then. France is, uh, you know, hotbed of, you know, hysteria. Yeah. Uh, also, Tanganyika. <laughs> great, great place for Where hysteria. Where is that? I don't know. I didn't, look. didn't look into it that far. Uh, Tanzania. Dang. Oh, okay. Okay. 1962. Okay. Everything starts with T here. Yeah. T, T, T. Uh, 1962, a mass hysteria episode in which people started laughing uncontrollably. <laughs> this is like what happens when you go to church. Cam says a joke and I can't stop. <laughs> and my wife's like, shut that up. That is the truth. Dude, dude. I don't know how, how it happens so Sometimes often. Sometimes it's just like, I need to be quiet. But. It's like Cam used to have a job at church where he had to sit up at the 
uh, up on in the front, in, yeah. Uh, um, you know, like the pulpit, right next to the pulpit. And yeah. I would send him like hilarious texts, and I'm like, uh, and like, tell my wife, watch, he's gonna start laughing. He's gonna <laughs> try to not laugh. And so it was like my oh. the best time I've ever had at church is like yeah. sending him texts and trying to make him laugh up there. And because I was right in front of everybody, you're yeah. right in front of everybody. Anyways, <clears throat> I just had to pretend like I was praying. Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, you put his head down and then bob up and down like this when he was, yeah, <laughs> just like keep rubbing my face, like. yeah. Um, anyways, th- people started laughing uncontrollably. It, it began in the village of Kashasha ah. on the western shore of Lake Victoria in Tanganyika. Sounds nice. Modern Tanzania. And quickly spread through the surrounding region. This is like, everybody's laughing. It's hilarious. So something, weird. Something's hilarious. By the time it subsided months later, the mass hysteria had affected thousands of people and led to the closure of 14 schools. <laughs> they just had to close school because I, we can't do school. Everybody keeps laughing. Uh, so weird. I know. It all started on January 30th, 1962, when a girl in a missionary boarding school had a fit of anxiety-induced laughter. And I've, don't, I've never had one of those. But it sounds better than crying, I yeah. suppose. Yeah, or meowing. Or, or biting, <laughs> yeah. I guess. And started cackling uncontrollably. She was soon joined by two of her friends, and it was not long before the contagion had spread and engulfed the school. Within a short time, 95 out of the school's 159 students were laughing uncontrollably. <laughs> <That's a> crap. <laughs> I don't know, it was so funny. I don't know. It's hilarious. It got bad enough that the schoolgirls were unable to concentrate and the school was forced to shut down six weeks later. It This happened for six, six weeks, weeks before they shut it down. Um, the afflicted students took their mass hysteria with them when they were sent back to their families. And within a short time of returning home, the contagion had spread from the schoolgirls to the surrounding community. Holy crap. Before long, students in other schools in the region were affected as well. The symptoms consist- consisted mainly of recurring bouts of uncontrollable laughing and crying <laughs> that lasted from a few hours to over two weeks. Oh, jeez. Combined with the general restlessness. They're just like, hmm. Oh, I won't go. Yeah, and aimless running around. <laughs> that one happened a lot too. You just freaking run. We don't know where. It's like a dog when you let him out <laughs> yeah. of the backyard. Yeah, and the occasional I running around out there just laughing. <laughs> yeah, and the occasional resort to aggressive violence. Oh, okay. So that's that t- took a little turn. Took there. a little hard left turn, didn't it? <laughs> Doctors could find no f- physical cause for the contagion. Obviously, wasn't it in the original Batman? The laughing, mm-hmm. they'd start laughing like yep. and like. Get the big smile. Yep. Creepy stuff. By the time the mass hysteria subsided, about a year later, 14 schools had closed down and thousands had been afflicted. Subsequent uh, investigation attributed the initial outbreak to stress among the schoolgirls. So who stressful. They found themselves in an alien environment within the missionary-run boarding school. So, uh, that's pretty crazy. Interesting that religion tends to tie tends into to do people get a little stressed out with religious yeah. stuff. Exactly. So that's the Tanganyika laughter. That would be a weird one. That would probably drive me nuts. Oh, I know. It's like, shut like, up. It's not funny. <laughs> yeah. Quit it. I don't know what's so funny, but stop. Yeah, quit it. Um, so this one, uh, I kind of remember mm. a little bit of this um, when it happened. Sure. Just remember like hearing stuff about it, but I don't remember it being like a big I thought deal. this was something else, actually. I thought this was the... Pokemon Panic? The um, Remember the app that everybody was obsessed with? Like, Pokemon Go? Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty much another that thing. That was another hysteria. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, cartoons, you know, mm-hmm. pretty harmless for most kids. For sure. <laughs> it's just like um, occasional violence and things like that. But yeah. nothing really big to control the minds of kids. At least we don't think so. Right. You know, I didn't... G.I. Joe didn't mess with my head. I don't know. I still got Maybe. a thing for G.I. Joe's. Maybe. But. Um, what were the cartoons that you watched mainly growing up? Um, and the Ninja Turtles was a big Ninja one. Ninja Turtles was a good one. Um, I watched He Man. I, I watched He Man too. I, I watched GI Joe. GI um, Joe was good. What else did I watch cartoon wise? I think those... I always watched um Garfield and Friends. Yeah, because I it watched was Garf- on when I you know mm-hmm. it's like the perfect time. But then like car- then like a, you know Saved by the Bell was a big one I watched when I was a kid. Yeah, because it was yep. always on when I got. Home. I watched Full House. <laughs> yeah. Full, yeah, for sure. But I mean, cartoon wise, I think those were the big ones. There's more, obviously. I watched X Men with my like. I didn't watch X Men. Dad usually in the on like Saturday mornings it would come on. So. I'm sure there's others, but I can't think of. I know what they were. You ever remember the show like Today's Special? Yeah, super weird. Uh-huh, yeah, but uh, it came on. I, wa- I watched. Um, the Al- Alvin and the Chipmunks, whatever that mm-hmm. was, I watched that. Uh, Did any of them cause any seizures? 
Not that I can remember. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't. I don't you know. You probably wouldn't. I was drinking, Where'd all this vomit I was from? drinking Pepsi and eating Pop-Tarts. So, <laughs> like, who knows what Here's was going Pepsi. on. Yeah. Watch cartoons. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so Pokemon was really, really popular at that time. And there was a series. I never watched any of it. I never watched. I don't know anything about Pokemon. Me either. Nothing. I, I wasn't into any of that. But, um, <clears throat> but there's a dark mark on the record dark mark. of... Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's some stuff that happened that went down with the Pokemon cartoon. What? Really? Episode 38. Don't try and find it. Well, you probably can, but I, I would suppose who knows what will happen to you. Yeah. The episode aired at 6.30 p.m. on December 16th and was called Computer Warrior Porygon. Porygon. I probably said that wrong. Some of you pissed because it's yeah, Pokemon. Yeah, Porygon. <laughs> yeah. Millions of school-aged kids tuned in to watch it. Uh, Pikachu, the yellow rodent, you know, electrical powers. Yeah. And his trainer be transported inside of a computer where they oh. fought a Pokemon called Porygon. During the battle, Pikachu hits the opponent with an electrical attack that was depicted with a quick series of flashing lights. Oh, no. The flashing attack sequence appeared at 651. By 730, 618 yeah. kids had been rushed to the hospital. Holy crap. They suffered symptoms um, such as convulsion, altered level of consciousness, headaches, breathlessness, mm. nausea, vomiting, blurred vision, and depression. That sounds like just a normal Monday morning for me. <laughs> I <know. laughs> right? I, it's just, that's Monday morning. <laughs> it's, yeah. Reports of the illness spread like a plague to the point it warned a report on the evening news. Wow. The bad thing is the news reported oh it God. and played the offending <laughs> battle scene. Leave it to the news. That evening. To make it worse. Yeah. yeah. So the news like, this scene's been causing sickness everywhere we watch. It sounds like there a movie. There was actually movie. a Simpson episode, was and it? I don't know, I'm sure it was, you know, um, it may have even been before, but I remember... They turn it on. And they're like, "Watch! I heard this causes seizures," and all of them are all they like yeah. their eyes dilate and they yeah. start like seizing. I don't this know like, if it was to make fun of this or it was a prediction. Wasn't there a horror movie where like you watch something and you die yes. or something? Yeah, yeah. Or like, there's probably a million of them. Yeah, that one. It sounds super familiar, and I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But um, so, anyways, yeah, the news was like, mm. "This is what's happening," and they reported it, and they referred to it as Pokemon Shock or Pokemon mm. Shoku. Shoku! Oh, Shoku! Pokemon! Oh, Pokemon! Shoku. <laughs> oh, not the Pokemon! <laughs> For the Pokemon Shoku! Oh. Um, 12,000 children what? who were not sent to the hospital reported mild symptoms of the illness. So, um, wow. their symptoms more closely resembled mass hysteria than a seizure because okay. they were report reporting about it and that it caused this. They showed it. Yeah. People were interested, also looked it up. And <clears throat> so, they figure like, 12,000 kids were affected by this and most of it was psychological because they were like, this kid Shaku. happened. <laughs> oh, like, oh, Shaku. Uh, you are not prepared for Pokemon <laughs> Shaku. You know the Shaku. <laughs> <laughs> Don't watch these kids. Don't watch that on YouTube. Mm. Um, the incident, uh, or even the prime minister weighed in on the matter. What? He made a really bizarre statement about the dangers of rays and lasers since they had been researched as weapons. <laughs> so, anyway. What does that have anything to do I with I know. It? He just, like, kind of, like, I'm going to talk about this. Look, rays and lasers are bad. <laughs> I know. Pokemon Ooh, shuckle. Shuckle. Razor, laser. <laughs> However, there's a difference between the flashes in the games and those on episode 38. Okay. Because this is when Nintendo, you know, apologized and they actually had started releasing on the back of the games that said seizure risk. Yeah, don't. That had start from, started right, yeah. with this. But this is what's really weird about it is... Um, there's a flashing technique called Paka Paka. Oh, yeah. That has been used in anime for, like, years. And Japan's, um, they, they this isn't something new. And they, they've used it in multiple cartoons, mm. and it was no different in this episode. Really? Later studies showed that 5 to 10% of the viewers had mild symptoms, but they figure um, by testing this and the frequency of the flashes... Um, yeah. That that fit into Shouldn't the Paka Paka yeah. has never done that before wow. in any cartoon, so they don't know why. They think it has a lot to do, obviously, with the news being like, "Watch out for this." Yeah, exactly. They don't know what or yeah. if there was something different going on at the same time. Yeah, but super weird. So they think this was a you know case of mass hysteria where people are freaked out about watching and seeing things that could trigger these symptoms. Yeah, interesting. And they felt like they were having them as well. So off that's a weird subject, one. but sort of same subject. I do not understand anime. I, I me either. I don't get me it. either. I've never like my brother has watched like um what's the one with those big huge giant titans something like that. I don't know. He was like, "This is a really good series. Watch it." 
couldn't watch like 10 minutes of it. I just didn't get into it. I can't, like, there's like some, some people are super obsessed with it too. I follow like on TikTok and Instagram, like some movie reviewers, like some people that are just really into movies. Right? And, and those like, anime ones There's always there. animes and I'm like, what is happening? I think happening? that the writing and it. the stories are really good and that's why people, sure. Because I think the Japanese are really creative with like these weird kind of bizarre stories, but yeah. I can't watch them. I don't get it. I, don't I get can't it. do it. Me either. Weird. Anyways. Anime porn is like a big yeah. problem in Utah. <laughs> yeah, well, I just don't... It's like, man, it's not a problem. It's just <laughs> cartoons. I can watch cartoons. Bishop don't mind. <laughs> it's not in... <laughs> it's not in the interview, so... Yeah, I watch anime, just cartoons. Um, Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah. Sorry to people that do. I just don't. Yeah, I've never gotten into What that. I do get is why you should buy some nutrient survival. This stuff is made with real ingredients, not that fake anime crap. <laughs> made in America, not in Japan, to keep Americans healthy, strong, and alert. Perfect for today, ready for anything ahead. From hearty, delicious entrees and nutrient-dense snacks to immunity-boosting drinks and strength-building shakes. Each with 40 essential Nutrients available in handy singles, daily use pantry packs, durable cans, and three to 90 day survival kits, keeping your world safe and your body in peak condition. This isn't your cheap, empty calorie, bland food storage. This stuff has nutritional value and it tastes delicious. <laughs> Check out their new NREs, nutrition ready to eat. They're freaking awesome. Head over to nutrientsurvival.com, use our code. Casual Preppers, you're going to get 10% off your order. You're going to support us. You're going to support them. You're going to get some great stuff. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I always think about that too. Like I have this 25 year shelf life stuff and all of it's like, it's just carbs Yeah, I know. and like salt. I know. Like, mm. like, well, hopefully it didn't come to that. <laughs> I know. I need to get some more nutrient survival. That's what you think. Yep. Yeah. How about the town that caught Tourette's? That's okay. <laughs> bad deal. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Leroy, New York. After 12 high school girls developed Tourette like symptoms in 2011, their school was tested for toxins and all other factors for their symptoms. Uh, for their symptoms r- ruled out, so they d- so it wasn't the type of Tourette's where the, you, you scream obscenities. Oh, it wasn't. No, so it was it was the because <laughs> that's twitching. just high school. That's I was to say. Like, that just sounds like junior prom. <laughs> it ain't Tourette's. <laughs> no, yeah, it's just the hallways of modern day high yeah, school. Yeah, but it's more like the the twitches that come with the Tourette oh, okay. type stuff, right? As far as I could tell, they weren't screaming out obscenities and. Because you wouldn't know. You really wouldn't know. It'd be hard to tell. It's like, is it? Really? Sounds pretty normal. Are they normal? Do they have Tourette's? (laughs) Oh, the twitches are weird. Yeah. Well, sort of, I guess. (laughs) Who knows? That's true. Teenagers are bonkers, okay? (laughs) There's probably stuff going on all the time. It's just like, man. Teenagers, man. Yeah, I don't know. They're in something weird again. (laughs) Yeah. Must be a new Pokemon. (laughs) Something. (laughs) Gotta be. (laughs) Gotta be a new Pokemon. As long as they don't start biting and meowing, I'm yeah. fine with it. So the case and some of the girls and their parents gained national media attention. It was all over the place. In January of 2012, several more students and a 36-year-old adult female came forward with similar symptoms. This is somebody who just wants to relive their high school years. <laughs> I got the same things that the, the high school girls do. I'm young. <laughs> yeah. Look at me twitch like that girl. <laughs> That's true. You could, okay, now it's gone too far. <laughs> cast your vote for me, junior prom queen. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like, what it feels like. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't even go here. <laughs> she doesn't even live close to this place. She's 36. <laughs> she got two kids. <laughs> All right? Uh, uh, you're they, just weird. Get out of here. Get out of here. They couldn't find any toxins to blame for. Even Erin Brockovich. That's Remember crazy, her? yeah. Yeah, she sent out a team to investigate. Nothing. She's a pretty woman, too. Yeah, she's also, Aaron Brockovich has been in a lot of, <laughs> Ocean's 12 or 11. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Also, uh, My yeah. Best Friend's Wedding. My Best Friend's Wedding. Yeah. Right, yeah. That was Aaron Brockovich. Uh, Notting Hill. Yeah. Not, Aaron Brockovich had a great acting career. <laughs> um, anyways, they were all diagnosed with conversion disorder. Oh, yeah. Like we talked there about it is. earlier. A mental illness that can come out as twitches and other yeah. similar symptoms. So. That's that's weird. The town of Cotteret. I'm 36 year old. Just, just yeah, no one wants to be part attention of it. to that. <laughs> yeah, look, I cut my hair. My hair's crimped. Isn't that what you kids Ow. are doing? <laughs> look at all my Pokemon cards. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've talked about this one before. Have so we? the Salem witch trials. Oh, what a great time of. What a beautiful time. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know. So the Salem witch trials were a series of hearings and prosecutions of people accused of witchcraft yeah. in colonial Massachusetts between February 19 or 1692 19, 1991 1692 and yeah. May 1693. Yeah. This wasn't unusual across the globe like yeah. Europe was they're all about all it. into this. Yeah. They were super into this. Mm -hmm. But this was this one kind of got out of hand. <laughs> Not yeah. that the others did. It took it to the next level. Yeah. It all began when young Betty Paris and mm. Abigail Williams began screaming uncontrollably and flailing about. Betty and Abigail. Yeah. At yeah. it again. A doctor was like, what? I don't know what's going on here. Soon, <laughs> several other young girls came down with similar symptoms, putting the blame on three villagers. Okay. All women as the ones who had bewitched them. Oh, that's It kind of started with this. And I was looking into this a little more, and I can't remember if we talked about it, but they think it had a lot to do, like a lot of this was between like family feuds. Yeah. Where they were just like- Like the game show? You're cursed by a witch, you whore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the family feud, yep. <laughs> that started back then. Yeah. The women were brought to trial, two denied accusations, but one uh, Caribbean slave named Tituba. Oh, Tituba. Confessed to bewitching yes. the girls mm -hmm. and offered the names of other witches, likely yep. a ploy to save herself from execution. So she's like, I ain't alone. No. Tituba can't do this by herself. <laughs> Tituba needs friends. Tituba needs a friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what she's saying. <laughs> Tituba needs a friend. <laughs> Can I be a witch on my own? Uh, as more people were swept into the accusations, some confessed and pointed the finger at even more people. Ah, ah, that's John. <laughs> yeah, Tituba's friend. There's a Mexican <laughs> over there. <laughs> in Massachusetts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> So um, they Arriba, just, Arriba. people were just like, you're a witch, you're a witch, you're a whore, you're yeah. a witch. Witch, whore, witch, witch, whore. <laughs> Go down the line. So people were just like accusing people. Yeah. And it's like, if you hated someone at that time, yeah. you just were like, you're a witch. Witch. And so it just got pretty crazy. Mm. Um, so much so that 19 people had been hanged. Dang it. Seven died in jail awaiting execution. And one man had been pressed to death by stones. Pressed? That's what they call it. Good gracious. Not yeah, stoning is press. I got stoned. <laughs> Push it on his forehead. <laughs> press it down. <laughs> In all, two hundred yeah. people were accused of practicing witchcraft. Gosh, so, dang. um, case of mass hysteria because people were like, mm -hmm. kind of freaked out that they're like, maybe I'm bewitched, and and if you felt funny, you're like, I think I got cursed. Yeah, and you're a witch, and you're a witch. <laughs> so, um, yeah. it just went crazy for a while. I get it. And so, um. Watch out. Watch out. Because old witch, the, you could be bewitched anytime. It could happen again. Or turn into a nice TV show that went for seasons. I love to be witched. <laughs> bewitched. Yeah. Actually, you remember that one, too. Yeah. So I found this one. They did a great article at historycollection.com. Go check it out. But So in the 17th century, a lot of this stuff happened in the 1600s, it feels like. People threw, throughout much of Europe, they were highly susceptible to fears of poisoning. That yeah. Was like, I, that's crazy. I it was like a big deal. Makes sense. That was, that was the scary thing was getting poisoned. Oh, I'm getting poisoned. Oh, no. <laughs> Tell me, hurts. Oh, I'm got poisoned. It. Yeah, I got poisoned. Uh, such fear is sometimes... Can't plow the fields today. Yeah. I'm poisoned. Jerry, I can't plow. I got poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go to war. I'm poisoned. Uh, yes. You get a new ox to uh, Poisoned, okay? He's poisoned. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> such fears sometimes mushroomed into episodes of mass panic. Uh, specifically, people fretted that, that one would freak you out. Though. Yeah, I know. Getting poisoned. Nefarious others plan to spread a plague throughout Christendom via sinister means, such as sorcery and witchcraft, or mysterious poisonous gases. Chemtrails. Yeah, they were all before yeah, chemtrails. This is the original. No one ever documented those. No, nope. not until mm -hmm. jet. Those standing fears spiked into widespread panic and collective hysteria in the city of Milan, Italy, 1629, when its governor received an alarming message from King Philip IV of Spain. King Philip said, The royal message warned of authorities to be on the lookout for four Frenchmen who had escaped from a Spanish prison. I don't know if that's the right accent Pretty much. for that, but... um. Uh, so they, they escaped from a Spanish prison. They might be en route to Milan, his majesty noted, in order to spread the plague via poisonous and pestilential ointments. Okay? Wow. Yeah. So that's that's scary to people, okay? The result was mounting tensions in Milan. We're going to give you a poison. It's a poison. <laughs> oh, no. That's a spicy meatball. <laughs> oh, no. 
That's a poison. <laughs> Everybody, watch out. We're getting a poison. Oh, no. Um, and as alarmed citizens kept a wary lookout for suspicious characters, right? Everybody had the side eye going on. What's going <laughs> on out of here? You poison me? Yeah, I don't look. That's what the <laughs> Italian sound like. You poison me? Don't touch my skitty. Okay. Put on a poison. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The public's concern grew steadily, and the Milanese grew steadily more stressed out and frazzled as fears mounted of an imminent poisoning. It's going to happen today. I, know <laughs> I can't make it this a pizza. <laughs> oh, I can do a poison today. Oh, the spaghetti will have to wait. I can't. <laughs> can't do it. <laughs> Yours always gets a little Transylvanian <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. The boys are the get to be. <laughs> the garlic is not the good. Oh no, no garlic in that. Uh, anyways, um, the city that sat thus on a powder pig for months before it finally erupted. What? In yeah, it was a powder keg. If they were oh scared. powder keg. <laughs> yeah, what do you think I said? I don't know. I heard pig in there. Oh no, no pigs. Catered pig. It erupted into a mass panic that came to be known as the Great Poisoning Scare of Milan. Yeah, oh. yeah, Milan's mass. Uh, poisoning panic started on the night of May 17th, 1629. A night much like tonight, Cam. <laughs> when some citizens reported seeing mysterious a garbage people, truck. <laughs> a garbage falling truck. off the Empire State. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When some citizens reported seeing mysterious people placing what appeared to be poison in a cathedral partition. Oh, man. The city's health officials went to the cathedral while found no signs of poisoning. The following morning... That is a good... <clears throat> Like, this is a valid one to kind yeah, of creep you out. You're I know. Like, Everything's poison. I know. The Milanese woke up to an eerie discovery. All doors on the city's main streets have been marked with a mysterious daub. They don't know who did that? No. Oof. When health officials inspected the daubs, they found nothing harmful in them. So, they think that it was a prank. Like, it just, it, it, it's so weird that- It's a prank during a panic? Yeah. A panic prank. Um, it's just, it's funny that there <laughs> That's was... a good band. <laughs> I love Panic Prank. Panic is a prank. Their last episode, or their last uh, album was great. It's great. Um, but it's just funny to think about, like, pranksters and jokesters in the 1600s. Yeah. Like, there were still, like, people just out messing with yeah. people. You know what I mean? It's great. I, I guess like it. signs, like, came from, like, that kind mm. of mass hysteria yeah, exactly. of, like, crop circles. Yep. We didn't really talk about that one. Official reassurances were unavailing, however. Uh, many Milanese, uh, already on edge for months, took the mysterious daubs as a sign that the expected poison attack had finally arrived, and mass hysteria swept the at city. At least they're marking them. Yeah, at least they marked it. <laughs> as panic got a grip on the populace, the good people of Milan saw things that weren't there. And interpreted uh, yeah, innocent totally acts started losing their minds. in the most sinister ways possible. As fears in Milan mounted, mushroomed, and exploded into an unchecked panic, accusations of poisoning were hurled at random innocents, ranging from passersby on the streets to various nobles. Wow. Yeah. They didn't even escape uh, being said, hey, he's a poisoner. <laughs> Before long, the Milanese... Dumb peasants. Yeah. <laughs> firmly in the clutches of a collective hysteria that grew exponentially with each passing day, took to pointing fingers at all. Even the most absurd accusations, including ones alleging that famous and powerful people from far away were seen in Milan personally committing acts of poisoning, were taken seriously. The Pope was here yesterday. <laughs> he was poisoning everything. <laughs> took all the bread, poisoned it. All right. It's poison. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> that girl is poison. <laughs> yeah, that pulp is poison. <laughs> exactly. Early victims included an elderly man who was seen wiping a bench in church before he sat down. <laughs> I just can't wait for this service. I'm going to wipe this down. <laughs> You're a poisoner! <laughs> That's what they thought. Huh? Yeah, yeah. A mob of fear-crazed women accused him of poisoning the seat and seized and violently assailed him in church. They then dragged him to the magistrates and continued to beat him so badly on the way that he died before he got there. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Just yeah. wanting to take the sacrament. Yeah. And they freaking yeah. wiping the bench down. Can't wait to hear what Paul had to say about Jesus. <laughs> you know? It's over with. Innocent victims of Milan's poisoning panic included a pharmacist whose potions led to accusations of his being in league with the devil. After prolonged you know, torture and stretching all pharmacists on the rack, are suspicious. so they put him on the rack. They started stretching him, and he oh. changed his protestations of innocence to a confession of guilt. And, sure, sure, and sure. And I did. I poisoned y'all. My arms hurt. I'll tell you whatever you want to hear. Okay, this does not feel good. And he repeated whatever his torturers wanted to hear in order to end the pain. Obviously, yeah. he admitted to helping the devil. Okay, I helped the devil. All right, <laughs> I did it. 
<laughs> Give him my arms yeah. back. It hurts. All right? And foreigners uh, poisoned the city and named accomplices who were innocent of any crime. Oh, my gosh. They, in turn, were arrested and tortured, and to end their suffering, they named yet more people. <laughs> <laughs> it's a vicious cycle here. Their torture produced more false confessions and the naming of more innocent accomplices in a process that dragged out for more and more victims. Oh my gosh. All were t uh, tried and convicted based on the confessions extracted under torture and they were executed. <laughs> Holy crap. Yep. Don't torture me anymore. <laughs> Just kill me. <laughs> Just kill me. It was John down the street. Yeah, John did it. We know it. John. As the mass hysteria and mounting insanity tightened its grip on the fevered city, a high number of Milanese stepped forward to accuse themselves. <laughs> wow. Many went to the magistrates and voluntarily confessed to amazing supernatural deeds and described meetings did I with the, or somebody? Yeah. yeah, I did. I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> they described meetings with the devil, witches, sorcerers, and the sundry practitioners of black magic. Wow. Anyways. Just got out of control pretty it quick. It got pretty weird pretty quick. <laughs> so there it is. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, that was that was a great one. Jeez, um, this one is interesting. Um, we've I think we've mentioned this one. Before. Yeah, this is one like you could probably do. We an entire interrupt episode. this broadcast. Yeah, that's what it sounds like exactly. Too. The I'm, War of the Worlds. Have you ever listened to it? Um, no, I was good. trying to find a little segment there, but I didn't. It's is actually that, pretty good. Yeah, like it. Like if you put yourself back into the 30s, yeah, you, you could see how people got a little bit weird about that's it. All they listened to, yeah. And, paint pictures of it mm -hmm. um so october 30th 1938 families across america tuned in to an episode of the mercury theater on the air mm -hmm. a radio drama anthology series that broadcasted over the columbian columbia broadcasting system a classic form of dinner entertainment listeners of the radio show were expecting to hear a conventional interpretation of hg wells the war of the worlds mm -hmm. so um most of us, I bet you, you know, we probably all heard of this, that they basically started broadcasting, you know, with it being a real event. Mm -hmm. They were saying there's an alien invasion. You need to stay at home. Um, and they started going to different actors and that were, you know, pretending to be like news reporters and military generals and things like that. They were all part of this super well done mm -hmm. um, narration of H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds. People like lost their freaking minds, yeah. and they thought that there was an alien invasion. Some of them missed some of the little in between commercials during yeah. this because they just completely directed it as a, as a normal show. But um, people had missed the fact that it was actually—I don't even know if they stated that it was. They, they actually did. So at the beginning, so the reason they missed, like people had missed on some of yeah, those. So there was a, a like the most popular missed radio some. program went over a few minutes, and so oh. when people when people switched over. They didn't hear that. The, hey, this is the Orson Welles, and so this it is just the went into this emergency broadcast. Exactly, that's yeah. part of the show. Yeah. So I, I thought they had missed out on this, but it was also during a very stressful time. World War yeah. II was ramping up. Right. You know, the United States hadn't been involved yet, but it was almost people Halloween. were freaked out. They just knew the Nazis were mm -hmm. starting to take over Europe. So everybody, and it was almost Halloween. Yeah. It was just a lot of kind of people were on edge a little bit already, and then to hear this alien invasion. Some didn't understand if it was alien invasion or if it was possibly like a Nazi, yeah. um, like world attack. world attack, and and so it just freaked everybody out, and people kind of stormed out. Uh, uh, well, they they left their houses and they stormed into like big um, areas for protection and things like that. And the people that were involved in the broadcast actually had like police arrive and pull them into a room, mm -hmm. and they were like, um, "How many people do you think of?" been you know hurt because of this and you know they were just like like yeah. just going to town on them and they had no idea what was even going on they yeah. had like found out a little later that people were believing everything that they were saying like 30 minutes into the broadcast so Orson Welles probably like, this is the best thing I've ever done it did it, I think Convinced it boosted everybody. his yeah. yeah so um but yeah um I don't I didn't read any statistics on like people getting hurt I know there was like tramplings and stuff like mm -hmm. that but I don't know that anybody died but People were super freaked out for yeah. a good amount of time. It's a great story, man. And I it think just that's spread good. through the communities. Um, so that one's like a pretty, uh, you know, pretty obvious yeah. case of mass hysteria where people just freaked fed out. off from this and mm -hmm. lost their mind. So yeah, that was a good one. I love that one. I, I wanted to do a full episode on that one day, but I can't remember. We brought it up somewhere, but it wasn't. Yeah, it, for all, something else, all in of itself. Yep. I think it was some Halloween. Oh no, it was during the. Um, it was during the radio broadcast. Oh yeah, once. that's probably what it was. 
All right, I got this one from worldhistory.medium.com. Um, just so you know, it's, it had a really Medium. good article Medium.com, yeah. I go there all the time. Yes. During the long dark nights of November and December of 1803, a rumor spread in Hammersmith, a neighborhood in West London. Several residents reported seeing a ghost, right? That's scary. He was tall and dressed in a white cloak, although some residents said he had horns. Okay. That, that Sounds obviously pretty common. Freaked people out. Yeah. The ghost jumped out and scared people in the darkness. Some said that he had actually attacked them. People on Hammersmith began to panic, obviously, as is the case with things like this. Rumors built on each other and took on a life of their own. A story spread that a pregnant woman had died of fright after being assaulted by the ghost. <laughs> right? People, I hate this ghost. Killing pregnant ladies. <laughs> right? This ghost is the worst. Um, many residents believed that the spirit of a man who had committed suicide was roaming the neighborhood. It was considered sacrilegious to bury a suicide victim in a holy burial ground. Wow. Apparently. Yeah. They were I hadn't all, heard that one. No, that's a new one. Citizens formed neighborhood watch patrols. Are you on a ghost patrol or not? Yeah, I'm from 10 to 11. Yeah, ghost busting this evening. <laughs> all right, that's where ghost busters came from. Yes. All right. <laughs> they prowled the streets each night in search of the specter. Can you imagine? The, honestly, I would love that. I would love to be on Ghost Patrol. Yeah. Walking around my neighborhood looking for ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> I would do it. Show your face. Okay. <laughs> All right. You're not a ghost. You're just a kid. Get to bed. Get to bed, kid. <laughs> a few days after Christmas, one of the watchmen saw the ghost and chased him, but he tossed its white cloak aside and disappeared into the night. Ooh. Yeah, it's getting freaky. There's not been a movie on this, huh? On January 3rd, 1804, a man named Francis Smith was walking the streets of Hammersmith with his shotgun. Ugh. Keeping an eye out for the ghost, right? What do you do if you're afraid of ghosts? You get a shotgun, just in case. As midnight neared, this he, stuff happens nowadays. I know. Thinking it's a every break day. in, and they just happened every day. Yep. As midnight neared, he saw something—a figure clad all in white. He called out, "Damn you! Where are you? And what are you? Damn you! I will shoot you!" <laughs> That's what he said. That's exactly right? how. It's yeah. Done. Smith fired before the ghost could answer. That's always best practice. Yeah. See a ghost shoot before it says anything. Might curse you or something. After what must have been a moment of exultation, Smith realized that he had made a terrible mistake. He had not shot the ghost. Instead, he had murdered a man named Thomas Millwood, who was leaving his mother's house to head home for the night. Millwood was a bricklayer, clad head to toe in white as was customary for members of his profession. <clears throat> Millwood's relatives had begged him not to walk around at night dressed in white. He had already had oh, one really? altercation with someone who thought he was a ghost. He's like, ah, no big deal. Change at work. <laughs> yeah, put on a jacket or something. <laughs> you look too white. You look like a freaking ghost. I'm proud to be a Mason. Or a- <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly right. <laughs> This is a Masonic conspiracy. Yeah, I'm proud to be a bricklayer, okay? I ain't going to cover it up. I wear bricklayer white everywhere I go. My dad was a bricklayer. Mm -hmm. His dad was a bricklayer. I ain't covering it up. My daughter's going to be a bricklayer. (laughs) All of us are bricklayers. We wear the white. See ya. See you later. Going to work. I'm going to go home. (laughs) (laughs) Shit, a war jacket. A few a few days after killing of Thomas Millwood, a cobbler named John Graham sheepishly, sheepishly came forward and admitted to being the ghost. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, uh, he explained that the apprentices in his shop had been telling his children scary stories, so he decided to get even by frightening the apprentices. Dang. He wrapped himself in a white tablecloth and tried to frighten his workers at night on a few occasions. The panicked imaginations of Londoners did the Spread rest. all over. Yeah. So, Mr. Graham killed Mr. Millwood uh, pretty much. Dang. So, that sucks. Well. Anyways. You know, if you although, if you are going to be out at night, it's going to be cold. It's going to be windy, maybe. Yeah. Maybe there's some rain. Put on some off-the-grid surplus stuff, dude. Right, it's the best stuff because they inspire greater connection through adventure. What's more adventurous than hunting ghosts at night in your <laughs> right. neighborhood? Right, they do that by creating extremely functional and everyday wearable products for a great price to take you off the grid. Cam, it is short season. Yes, and if you want shorts, you got to go to Off the Grid Surplus. They have the best shorts. They do. You have ever seen. They are a delight. You put them on your legs and your hips and whatnot. And your knees and your, your knees. Calf show. Yeah. Yeah. But they're just, they're, they fit so well. Okay. They're perfect. Check out their new Happy Trails collection before it sells out. Check out their site, offthegridsurplus.com. Get an extra 15% off with our code CASUALPREPPERS15. 15%. That's a great deal. 
Yeah, that's right. a great deal. Get it done. Better than 10. Way better. Yep. 50% better. So, mm-hmm. the Mad Gasser of Matum. We've talked about this one before, too. Did we? Mm-hmm. I can. It sounded kind of familiar. So, for several weeks in September 1944, again, mm-hmm. a little bit of a stressful time yeah, period. Kind of, yeah, there was stuff going on in the people world. People in the town of, isn't it Matone? Matone, Matone? yeah, Matone. Matone, yeah. Illinois, uh, showed the symptoms of exposure to a poisonous gas, yeah. nausea, vomiting, weakness, leading to near paralysis, lightheadedness, and even spitting up blood. <laughs> Common stuff I see All in urgent care every week. Yeah, every single week. All of the victims reported a sweet, cheap perfume odor, like Aspen or Joanna Musk. <laughs> Aspen. <laughs> do you remember Aspen? I do remember Big old Aspen. leaf on it. Yeah. Strong stuff. Mm-hmm. Permeating their homes prior to the onset of the sickness. Sure. They could smell it. Yeah. Occurring during World War II when so many men were fighting off, or, or, or off fighting. <laughs> fighting or, off women. They're fighting off women. <laughs> so many women were left alone, and the yeah. gassing had explained... Uh, a way as the product of paranoia, panic, and delirium. I yeah. think a lot of people are just kind of on edge, For obviously. Sure. Yeah. Many who came forward to report a smell coming through their windows at night, mm-hmm. in some cases seeing a shadowy figure running into the darkness. There's always a shadowy like, figure. What's that smell? You see a guy oh, running into the corn? He made I'm smell. dizzy. <laughs> I'm dizzy. I'm sweaty. <laughs> it's blood. <laughs> blood. <laughs> blood. Um, within 48 hours, four har- harms, harms had been hit, and the newspaper headlines blared, Anesthetic prowler on the loose. The so, mad guesser of Matoon. Yeah, so it's they, again. Yeah, the evenings were sultry, forcing yes, people were. to leave their op- open their windows. Uh, to leave open their windows. That's yeah. a weird way to say sultry. It. Yeah, that the is a weird. Evenings are a bit sultry. I think ah. I'll open the window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on um, subsequent nights, several more homes were hit. In the mid 1940s, and the mad gasser terrorized the residents of uh, Matoon. Matoon. Uh, several residents reported waking up to an order that caused vomiting, causing nausea. Yeah, and same thing. Just like yeah. that. So, thank- thankfully, the medical issues suffered by the victims cleared up just as soon as they had spread. Yeah. It wasn't something that stuck and they didn't die. No one died, okay? Yeah. Although the investigation failed to turn up any leads, most medical experts speculated it was a cause of mass hysteria because people um, could sense an odor from nearby f- uh, factories or, you know, one yeah. of those hoarders or something like that. Oh, yeah. And they just had heard the news of this mad gasser, and so they immediately started to panic. They're like, I, I can't breathe. Yep. I'm a tummy hurts. And so they were freaking out. Um, they often called this the phantom anesthesis, uh, mm-hmm. which is pretty creepy. Nah, I don't want that around They're me. They're just carrying around a little bug sprayer and <laughs> filling homes full of gas trying yeah. to kill them. Uh-huh. So anyways, um, that would freak me out, too. Here in some of these big gassing houses, I mean, yeah. something smells weird. Because yeah. I've woke, I, I've like when my uh, smoke detector goes off, I'm like, mm-hmm. do I feel dizzy? Is it carbon, yeah. monoxide? Is it carbon monoxide? What's monoxide? happening? Yep. Every so time, I ended up switching mine out that actually tell you what it is. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, yeah, that chirping pisses me off because it's probably a battery, ninety nine point nine percent of the time. But you have to know. But you're like, what if it is? Mm-hmm. Open I all the windows it? up. And, yeah. yeah. Tell the kids to go stay somewhere else. Okay, this is this one is weird, dude. The yeah, Seattle I, I saw just the title, but I didn't yeah. read into it. So, the Seattle I mean, windshield pitting epidemic. This is a phenomenon which affected Bellingham, Seattle, and other communities in Washington State, April 1954. It was characterized by widespread observation of previously unnoticed windshield holes, pits, and dings, leading residents to believe that a common causative agent was at work. This this just makes no sense whatsoever. It was originally thought to be the work of vandals, but the rate of pitting was so great that residents began to attribute it to everything from sand flea eggs to nuclear (laughs) bomb testing. Okay. I got a pit on my windshield. They must be testing H-bombs over here again. (laughs) It makes a whole lot of sense, right? Yep. Originating in Bellingham in March, police initially believed the work to be uh, vandals using BB guns. Yeah. Makes total sense, yeah. right? However, the pitting was soon observed in the nearby towns of Cedro Woolley and Mount Vernon, and by mid April appeared to have spread to the town of Anak. Anacertes, I don't know how to say that, Fidalgo Island. Within a week, the news and the so called pitting epidemic had reached 
metropolitan Seattle. That's where it gets Dang. weird. All the newspapers began to feature the story. More and more reports of pitting were called in. Motorists began stopping police cars to report damage. This is, this makes no sense whatsoever. Car lots and parking garages reported <clears throat> particularly severe attacks. Several hypotheses for the widespread damage were, were postulated. Some thought a new million-watt radio transmitter at <laughs> nearby Jim Crack Creek thing. Naval Radio Station was producing waves that caused physical oscillations in glass. Had to be that radio. God, he's <laughs> freaking screwing up our glass. Yeah. <laughs> Some believed it to be the work of cosmic rays. Some reported seeing glass bubbles form right before their eyes, believing it to be the work of sand fleas. I think sand fleas. I know, every time. It's Pass always right sand through fleas. Windshield. Yeah. By April 15th, close to 3,000 windshields had been reported as affected, which prompted Mayor Alan Pomeroy to ask for help from Washington Governor Arthur B. Langley and President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Oh. They went all the way to the president. What's going on in our windshields, <laughs> Mr. President? Yeah, you got to fix this. Call Congress together. We'll work on this. Get something done. Finally, Sergeant Max Allison of the Seattle Police Crime Laboratory stated that the pitting reports consisted of 5% hoodlumism and 95% public hysteria. <laughs> Ain't nothing but a bunch of idiots thinking that every windshield's are broken. Nope. They're yeah. all fine. <laughs> and then by April 17th, it suddenly stopped. That's so weird. Yeah, so in his... That's a large area. Dude, it's so crazy. weird. In his introduction to collective behavior and collective action, David L. Miller writes that the testing of nuclear weapons and the threat of nuclear war had been viewed as once uh, this the source of anxiety for all of this. That's insane. That's a weird one. I know, man. I, I want to know what it was. It was just anxiety. I don't think so. That's what they said. It's sand police for God, sure. It's definitely got to be nuclear weapons. It's got to be, be sand police. Cosmic rays <laughs> yeah. mixed with nuclear weapon <laughs> dust. Yep. So um, let's jump to 2016. Great year. Great year. It was a good time. Yeah. Trying to think, was okay, it 2016. Year. What was going on during that? Man, Obama got elected. Oh, okay. Right? Big deal. Was that right? It was a big deal. Could be. No. <laughs> no. Be. He got reelected, right? Yeah, that would be. I don't know. Now, something happened. People were there. This is what was happening for mm -hmm. real. Um, there was a widespread belief that evil clowns were roaming the streets. Yep, I remember that. There was a huge clown panic that was going on. Yeah. Chiefly in the United States, but it had spread to other countries, Canada and the UK also. Canadian clowns? Yes. British clowns. <laughs> British clowns. <laughs> Hong Kong. <laughs> Hong Kong, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Permission to scare you. Look at my flower. <laughs> this is a brilliant outfit. <laughs> my shoes are quite big, don't you think? <laughs> They're quite I, floppy. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. Brilliant is like my favorite British yeah, word. They is. use it so much. Yeah. The clown panic seems to have started as a result of a single viral marketing stunt in Wisconsin. Okay. The stunt um, was a generous term because the man was dressed in a creepy clown outfit and just standing on the street corner he didn't do anything he was just there yeah and people were like what's going on after reports began to roll in from all across the country clowns with weapons mm -hmm. clowns making threats clowns looking ominous um as near uh and as near as anyone could tell none of it was real i'll bet you not a single clown actually did anything dangerous during this entire event i'll bet you stephen king's book it blew just, up like, blew up when did pennywise come out 18 it was what? When did it come out? Like the, you know, the Pennywise, not it, uh, but... I don't know. The newer one. Oh, I don't know. I don't I'm not sure. It around that time. I don't know. Police receiving uh, anonymous reports. I thought it was called It to... too, wasn't it? As well? The oh, movie? maybe it was It, huh? I think it was called I thought it. for some reason I thought the title was just Pennywise. No, I don't think so. Yeah. I could be wrong, though. So the newer It yeah. was around that time, maybe? Yeah. Clowns have always freaked me out. Oh, yeah, they're scary. And man. when they're in, yeah, like, haunted it. houses... 2017 is when it came. Oh, it came, came out, out later because they were like, yep. "This is a big deal." We gotta, we gotta. Now's the time. On this. Now's the time. Yep. Police were receiving anonymous reports of clowns trying to lure children, and little or no ev evidence ever came back. So all this stuff was going on, and reports and calls of clowns, but there was never anything to prove that it was happening. Yeah. So by October, most media sources were openly calling it a hoax, since no genuine harm had been caused, no real arrests had been made. Just false arrests, whatever yeah. that means. False reports. Um, this was the biggest, one of the biggest cases of mass hysteria that had happened um, in modern times, like, like more recent times. Right. Um, 
not um it's actually happened with clowns in the past too really? so 1981 the year of years. That's for, the greatest year ever. Yep. The police received calls from uh, people reporting clowns driving vans near schools and trying to attract children with candy. Mm. Mm-hmm. Naked from the waist down in playgrounds. <laughs> or oh, even what? Jumping from the bushes with knives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Look at the horn up here. <laughs> <laughs> now wonk, look wonk. at the other one. <laughs> 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 That's exactly what they were yep. doing. <laughs> Um, reports of, uh, involving evil clowns were made in Massachusetts, Missouri, and Pennsylvania, to name a few. Wow. No costume serial killers or kidnappers were ever found. The clown sighting simply stopped eventually. A decade later, it happened again. At least what? 40 children reported seeing clowns wandering in their backyards, peeking through windows. Oh my gosh, that's like a nightmare yeah. as a kid. Clowns driving vans and offering candy, um, <laughs> are seen again by Chicago school children. Gosh. Um, I would creep me out if my son was like, there's a clown. Yeah. And he wanted me to honk his horn. <laughs> what? He asked me to honk his horn and pull on his tail. <laughs> yeah. His front tail. Oh, oh, man. Yeah. He said, have you ever kissed a rabbit between the ears? <laughs> then he pulled out his pockets. <laughs> you remember that joke? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um... In 2008, Chicago's local newspaper alert about a clown driving a van, always a van, yeah. and approaching children all over the city. Again, kind of caused a little hysteria, but never were mm-hmm. there any facts or ever a clown found. Yeah. Never a van found either. Or clown. So, weird stuff. Man. Yeah, man. Clowns creep me out. Clowns in vans yeah. and clowns without underpants. Yeah. About as scary as a No, thank you. <laughs> Remember Bozo? Did you ever watch that? Uh-huh. I watched it too. Weird. Remember Homie the Clown? I remember Homie the Clown. Homie don't play that. <laughs> homie don't play that. <laughs> he, had, he had like a sock him with full that. of <laughs> like change or something. Yeah. I can't remember what it was. That was funny. Yeah, that was good stuff. I got one more for you, Kim. Yes, let's hear it. How about the Lily Boring School Witchcraft Hysteria? Oh, yes. <laughs> Antoinette Borgion. 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 <laughs> um, a pious but mentally unstable 17th century French woman. Freaking Frenchies, man. I know. Found in an all-girls boarding school in Lille, France. Okay, first off, you don't let a pious but mentally unstable French woman found an all-girls boarding school. <laughs> you got to go through some sort of like pre-application process yeah, and weed them no out. Screening back. <laughs> yeah, backgrounds <laughs> weren't done. Come on, Frenchies. Um, one day in 1639, upon entering the classroom, Madame this was so crazy. Borgenon. Imagine that she saw a swarm of little black angels flying around the heads of the schoolgirls. It's like he's a very bad. Um, it's so it's like the old cartoons, yeah, with like, like Bugs Sweetie. Bunny and yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, taking fright, she told the children to beware the devil, whose little black imps were buzzing all around them. That's exactly what you want to tell a bunch of kids. The school's headmistress developed an obsession with the little black imps hovering around her ward's heads and kept warning the schoolgirls daily to watch out for the devil. (laughs) All right. Soon the impressionable children came to believe that they were indeed little black demons flying all around them. And before long, Satan and satanic possession became almost the sole topic of conversation in the school. This is like... uh, You got them too? Yeah, I got them. What are you... You got them? (laughs) She said, I had him too, so we're in a club. <laughs> yeah, we all got Satan. We all do. Black ones on thars. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. No black devils around the hars. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> One of the girls ran away, too frightened to remain in a school infested with little black devils who might possess her Papa, anymore. I don't want to go back to school. I hate this school. This is a school <laughs> in the whole world. That's... The devils, it, they're around my head. <laughs> little black imps, they fly. All around the school. <laughs> I'm dancing, so go back to school. <laughs> I gotta finish my dance here. <laughs> um, when she was brought back, she claimed not to have run away, but to have been carried away by the devil. Dang. And she was a witch and had been one since age seven. <laughs> I've been a witch since age seven. I've been doing it for a long, long time. <laughs> you get to see her. Uh, um, upon hearing that, about 50 other schoolgirls started having fits. Oh, she got out of school. That's, yeah. That's exactly what's going on. Mm-hmm. And they came to, joined in a Me Too rush, and claimed to be witches as well. <laughs> yeah, we're witch. We're witch. I'm a witch. We're witch. <laughs> we, we, witches. Um, <laughs> uh, in their clamor to confess, the children come competed to outdo each other with the details of their supposed dark and fell deeds. Some claimed to ride on broomsticks, only to be topped by others claiming an ability to pass through keyholes. 
That's a good yeah, skill. That's a great, great move. If I was move. a witch, that's the one I would want. That's a witch move right, right there. Key holes. Are there yeah. any keyholes on doors anymore? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> to be trumped in turn by those claiming to feast on the flesh of babies. Um, I don't know if you want to say that. As people don't <laughs> like when you say you eat babies. and and Or to have attended the Dome Daniel. Dom Daniel, I don't know what that is, or Gathering of the Demons. Oh, it's Gathering of the Demons. A formal investigation was launched, and while some clergy and citizens of Lily were skeptical, the majority were of the opinion that the children's confessions were valid. And that an example... No, no. (laughs) They got a point. I think they do got that going on. (laughs) Okay? Trust me, I've seen a little black devil around them. Yeah. Makes sense when you think She's a little brat at home, so I'm pretty sure. Yep. Don't clean a room never not once. (laughs) Definitely got a devil with them. Ain't not one time done. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, that they thought that an example should be made by burning all 50 schoolgirls at the stake as witches. <laughs> well, well, what we should we do? <laughs> Burn them at the stake. <laughs> <laughs> we have a big bonfire of a bunch of witch girls. <laughs> they will burn... We will drink wine and bunch of women. We shall have quest songs. That came German. We, sh- <laughs> we shall dance. <laughs> we shall burn the little witches. <laughs> Uh, Their lives were only spared after some of the skeptical clergy, aghast at what was about to happen, insisted that the investigators dig in deeper. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Before we burn a bunch of baby kids, (laughs) let's look into this a little more. And then they figured out that what the headmistress had done. I love how that's always like the solution. I know. Just burn it. Get rid of them. Burn them. Burn them. I don't want to look at them. Wrap them up and burn them. I don't want to figure it out. Don't have to look at them no more. (laughs) Uh, The children were absolved, and the blame was shifted to Madame Borisinon. Borisinon. Borisinon, who barely escaped punishment after the authorities, unsure of her sanity and tired of the whole affair, wound down and closed the investigation. Done and done. Done. We're done. Sick of this lady. Sick of these kids. (laughs) Get it over with. Done. So that's mass hysteria. Such an interesting thing because it really is. Um, it's you still see it today. Like oh, for sure. For example, like when the you know social media yeah. fuels that stuff like crazy. Mm-hmm. So we're seeing it constantly. But like when they were like, oh, the gas station in you know the yes. gas production center in Salt Lake, is that and is everybody gone? just rushed to the gas mm-hmm. stations and filled up everything they had. They did garbage bags. Yep, not good. I didn't. No way. I got a little black angel around me. <laughs> That's right. They told me not to go. <laughs> uh, today's podcast is brought to you by Tack Pack, the only monthly tactical subscription box with useful, professional-grade stuff inside. Use our code CASUALPREPPERS, and you get a free $70 machine-made part from Next Level Shameen. Armament. Machine made Shoku. Yeah, Shoku. You know, we, I did want to mention that we got the Fieldcraft EDC belt. Oh, Do you yeah. have that right there, Cam? Show it to the camera because this is really cool. So this is great if you're looking for a um, like it's all it's kind of fanny pack style, right? Yeah. But it has a great spot for your concealed carry. It's got a great spot for like all of your different EDC items in, in the front as well. Um, really well made from they make field nice bags. Yeah, from fieldcraftsurvival.com. They've got good stuff. So they do. you guys should check it out. Like if you're looking for something that's sort of low key, but you can also keep your concealed carry in it. It's pretty dang cool. So go check that out. It's the Fieldcraft uh, EDC belt bag, I think is what they call it. Pretty yeah. dang, pretty dang sweet, right? You never know when a bricklayer is going to sneak up on yeah, you. No, you got to you you gotta gotta have that gun on you. Bust a cat, <laughs> you know? Well, that's it, Cam. Hope we didn't scare you too bad. No, chill out, man. Hopefully this doesn't create Don't mass follow hysteria the masses. with all of our listeners. Mm-hmm. Probably will. That's all we got, guys. Thanks. Uh, stay survived.